Good morning, Basil Creek Church family. Good morning, good morning to you, you, and you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it and praise his holy name and worship him in spirit and in truth. For he alone is worthy of all glory, all honor, and all of our praises. Amen. So while I live, I will bless the Lord. I will sing praises unto him while I have my being. I will bless the Lord at all times times his praises shall continually be in my mouth the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for if a founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully this is the generation of them that seek him that seek his face O Jacob so lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the lord of hosts the lord of hosts <laughs> the Lord of hosts. Come on, the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. He is our strong tower. He is our way maker. He is that lily in the valley. He is that bright and morning star. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Come on and worship him. Come on and bow down for him and give him your dues this morning. He is worthy of all glory, all honor, and all of our praises. Amen. He is worthy of a thank you this morning. He's worthy of a shout of glory, of hallelujah, of praise the Lord, of thank you Jesus this morning. Because he's brought us from a mighty long way. Even this weekend, through danger seen and unseen, he's brought us from a mighty long way. If you look back over your life, you can testify that he's brought you. He's brought your family. He's brought your children from a mighty long way. So we give him glory. We give him honor. And we give him praise. Even in the celebration of this baptism this morning, we give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. You may have your seats as we turn the service over to the baptism.
Come on and let the church say amen. Come on and say amen. Come on and give God some praise in his house, beloved. Yes, indeed, we thank God for this awesome opportunity to baptize a soul into the body and family of God. This is the first baptism in several years here. So I am honored and privileged as your pastor and as your father to be here with you this moment. We're going to ask you to step down into the pool. Yasi Patterson, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on and give God a praise in this house. Come on and give him a praise. Praise the Lord. Glory to your name, O oh God. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, good morning once again. God is so good. God is so good. He's calling young people, amen, to be saved. Young people. He said, suffer the children to come unto me. Hey, and forbid them not, amen. Amen. We just witnessed a beautiful thing. We give God all glory and all the praise. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for today is recorded in the book of Romans. And I ask that you would stand even for the reading of the word of God. Recorded in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 31 through 39. 39. I'm going to be reading from the NIV. And the word of God is recorded on this wise. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship? or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced 
that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor death, nor anything else is in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. May we pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Our Father and our God. Once again, a few of your humble servants have gathered together in your name. In this place, across the airwaves, just to give you glory, just to give you honor, to worship you, to give you praise for your goodness and your mercy toward us, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we say thank you, Lord, for how you've been throughout our lives how you've blessed us. You've been the same yesterday, today, and we trust you to be that same God tomorrow as your word proclaims that you would be. We thank you that you are no respecter of persons, God. We thank you how you watch over each and every one of us from your littlest saint to the elders. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for blessing us for giving us all things, God, that pertain to life and godliness, for preparing blessings, for opening up the windows of heaven, for showering us, God, for being consistent in your blessings over us, God, for the great and the mighty and the simple and the small, for those that we consider trivial, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the rain and the latter rain, God. We thank you for the sun and the, and the moon, God. We thank you for the daylight and the nighttime, God. We thank you for a sweet, peaceful rest and rising with strength in our bodies, God. Even a reasonable portion of strength, God, that you allow us every day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for though you, though you sit high, that you continue to look low. You continue to see about us, that you will come down from heaven. You proved that you would do it, God, through your son, Jesus, to see about us. And for that, we give you glory. For that, we give you honor. For that, we praise you, God. You said we have not because we ask not. And then you open an avenue that we might pray directly to you, God. And so for that, we say thank you, Lord, for hiding us, God under the shelter of your mighty wings then for carrying us God when we could no longer carry ourselves God for protecting us from all hurt harm and danger God we say thank you Lord when we were sick God you came to see about us when we were homeless God you provided a roof over our heads, God. When we were hungry, you fed us, God. You allowed us to do the same, God. And you told us that when we do it to the least of these, that we're doing it as unto you, God. So we thank you for every provision right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God. We call it a blessing to be in your presence this morning, God. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. We thank you. We give you glory. We worship you and we honor you. Creating us a clean heart, God. Renew a right spirit in each and every one of us. Bless us this day. This waiting congregation, those waiting on the prayer on the conference line, those across the internet. Bless your servants, God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.
may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Come on, how many of us are happy to be in the presence of our God this morning? Come on and celebrate with me. Will you celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with me? Will you lift his name with me this morning? Come on, will you give him the highest praise this morning? Come on, will you give God the highest praise? If you're able, beloved, if you're able, come on, if your joints work this morning, can you give him a wave offering? Can you tell him thank you? Can you tell him we love you this morning? Can you tell him how great he is? Great is our God. The song says, oh, how we love you. Oh, how amazing. Oh, how wonderful is the Lord our God. Come on and shabak the Lord in this place. We thank God for each of you all. We thank God for you this morning. On this beautiful Sunday morning, another day that the Lord has made, we should be glad. We should be glad. Somebody once said, I thank God that my bed last night was not my cooling bed. Thank God I didn't wake up dead. Thank God I'm still in the land of the living. Thank God I'm still on this side of eternity. My God. I praise God for this opportunity. What a wonderful day. We've had baptism service. Come on, somebody. Come on, we're going to worship God this morning. Then we're going to break the bread of life together at the Lord's table. I don't know if you can put much more action pack in one service, but we thank God for it today. Amen? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And I'm honored. I am honored to be the pastor of this great house of worship. It is a privilege. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of our visitors, all of our visitors, whether you're joining us on our conference call or on the live stream or you're here in person, we want to love on you because the creek loves to love on people. Amen. Do we love to love on people? Come on now. We love to love on you. So don't be shat, don't be bashful. If this is your first time visiting with us, we are going to ask you to extend your hand in the air so we can recognize you. If you're visiting from another part of the body of Christ this morning, come on and put your hand in the air and let us love on you this morning. I see you. I see you. Come on. Let's give them some love. We have some of my special guests here today. Yeah. My in-laws, my in-loves, my in-loves. I'm my, my, my mother-in-law's only son, y'all. <laughs> if you would, if you would, just love on them this morning. Marvin and Carolyn Jackson. They drove all the way from Virginia Beach to join us today for worship. Come on, let's celebrate. Amen. I owe that woman a lot. <laughs> she didn't only birth my wife and raise her, but she raised her in the fear and knowledge of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm thankful for each of you this morning. We're going to have our announcements, but directly following our announcements, we also have a special presentation. Uh, we're going to extend the right hand of fellowship this morning. Amen. So before the, the announcements uh, get started, so we are still being COVID cautious. Amen. Amen. And usually where we would have the candidates for new membership stand in front of the church and each member would come and give them the right hand of fellowship. Today, we're going to modify that just a bit. Is that okay? So we can stay safe and cautious. Amen? Someone say safe, compassionate, and cautious. 
Amen. So what we're going to do is when I present each candidate to you, we'll line them up up front, and I'm going to ask every member of Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church to extend their right hand toward them as we welcome them into this body of faith, okay? All right, so now let's guard our minds, our hearts, and also our calendars as we prepare for our announcements. Good morning, Basil Creek Church family and friends, and welcome to our service. We're so glad you decided to join us today. Special thanks to everyone who played a role in making last week's youth outing a success. Please be on the lookout for more opportunities for our youth to connect and serve. Support our Basil Creek Believer softball team. They will play on Mondays and Wednesdays beginning September 12th. A full schedule is located in the vestibule. If you're interested in purchasing a Sunday School commentary for 2022-23, please let Sister Faye Garrett know as soon as possible. Commentaries are $20 each. The Outreach, Men's, and Evangelism Ministries are asking the congregation to donate miniature-sized toiletries that can be used to create care packages for our homeless sisters and brothers. New members' classes are in action. Interested members should reach out to Deacon Elliot or Sister claim to get started. Join us for Bible study at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays via Facebook Live and the church conference line. And join us on Thursdays at 6 p.m. for workout class via Facebook Live. Office hours for Reverend Patterson are Tuesdays 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Fridays 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturdays by appointment. Our main telephone conference number is 605-562-8401. Access code 2206554. A prayer service held virtually on our conference line on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Please join us. Join us in the fight to defeat COVID-19. Please sign up to get your vaccine today for the safety of those you love if you've not already done so. Join us in praying at noon to intercede on behalf of our communities, our leaders, and our church family. Prayer works. The outreach ministry is asking each member to bring a food donation on the first Sunday of the month. Our food market is held every first Saturday of the month in the Aussie Stinson Fellowship Hall, located on the lower level. Your giving and prayers are needed and most appreciated. Giving can be done through U.S. Mail, our church website, or drop off on Sundays. Blessings to each one of you. Stay strong. Stay focused. And trust God. certificates of membership to our new members, we're going to celebrate everyone who has a birthday in the month of September. If that's you, will you allow us to give you a hand clap right now? If your birthday is in September. Yeah, yeah, come on, stand up. Stand up. Thank God for you. Life is precious. Amen. Will you allow us to sing to you in celebration? Come on, join me, choir. Happy birthday to each of our birthdays.
birthday special people in the month of September. At this time, I'm going to call forth our seven uh, new members so I can present to you your certificate of membership and also extend the right hand of fellowship to each of you. Will you please come forward and recall your name? <laughs> Reverend Durant. Marcia. Ashanti Patterson. I mean, Edwards, y'all. I'm gonna have to get used to that. You know, she recently got married. She's still a Patterson. Tell him I said it. Ayani Patterson. Yende Patterson. Yeah. And a Yasi Patterson. Yeah. I'm going to ask the congregation to rise. extend your right hand towards these new members. Yassi Patterson, as pastor of Badger Creek Missionary Baptist Church, I extend to you on behalf of our congregation the right hand of fellowship. Welcome. As pastor of Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church, on behalf of this great congregation, I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Yeah. Reverend Durant. <laughs> Man, I've been practicing. <laughs> Tia Tina Patterson, <laughs> as pastor of Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church, yes. and your loving husband, <laughs> I extend to you on behalf of this great congregation the right hand of fellowship. Welcome. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise for all of our You all may have your seats and welcome to this part of the body of Christ. Thank you. 
You don't have to wait to give God praise. You don't have to wait to that great getting up of morning. You can tell your story right now through your worship. You can let people know right now who you serve, who you belong to, who you love, who you honor, who do we obey. Thanks be to God. Yeah, let our life tell the story. Let our life be the example. Let our life and our worship be the testimony. Thanks be to God. Come on and give my co-laborers in the gospel. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus, for today. What a great day today is for many of us. What a great day it is. I don't want to belabor your patience because I know many of you might have Labor Day plans today. So in advance, happy Labor Day to each of you all. I won't hold you long. But I'll tell you, I'll, like I guess Kim Kardashian told Pete Davidson, I won't hold you long. You won't be here that long, okay? You, some of y'all get that later in the parking lot. I need someone about 30 years old to explain it to the others. You heard it read in the scriptures, Romans chapter 8. I'm going to reread from verse 37. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. No. In all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. If you would allow me to bend your ear for just a moment this morning, I want to come from the sermon topic, 99 Problems. Can you help me say that, beloved? 99 Problems. Pray with me. God, we thank you right now for this preaching and worshipful moment. God, I am your servant. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. For you are my Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Hide me behind the cross and open up all of the gates, our ear gates, our eye gates, our heart gates, to receive the word today which you would have us do. Allow it to take root into our lives, to convict us, to empower us, and to transform us, Lord. So we will be hearers and doers of your word. And the people of God said, Amen. In 2004, rapper and hip-hop mogul Sean Carter, a.k.a. Jay-Z, released the song 99 Problems. He borrowed the catchphrase from a former pimp and gangster rapper, Tracy Lauren Merrow, better known as Ice-T. I hate to break it to all of my seasoned saints that love Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Your precious character, Finn, was a former pimp. Jay-Z took the saying, 99 problems, and added these lyrics. If you're having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but expletive ain't one. Mm. Somebody shout, hmm. Now, Mr. Carter would later explain that his lyrics were not referring to women but rather female police canines used for illegal search and seizure. If you can get past the aggressive language, you will find a hidden message highlighting the societal woes and encouraging young black youth to learn their rights, survive racial profiling, 
and how to navigate the overreach of law enforcement. Jay-Z was literally saying, as a people, we got problems. He was saying that you already have to deal with the injustices of a broken judicial system that would rather see you in prison than in college. You already have to deal with poverty and prejudice, living in communities that have been redlined to restrict economic prosperity, suppress your right to vote, and hinder your economical opportunities. We all got problems, y'all. I can imagine Brother Carter was saying, listen, young blood, you already have to deal with brokenness in your home. In your neighborhood, there are food insecurities where there are more liquor stores than grocery stores. Inadequate health care, zero mental health resources. We are being policed like chattel by people who don't even live in our community. The penal system is being used as a makeshift behavioral health facility. I find it interesting and troubling that when black and brown communities were struggling with the crack epidemic and with drug addiction and drug related crimes, it was called a war on drugs. But now draconian laws were enacted to create three strikes and you're out mandatory life sentences and define repeat offenders as super predators. But now, someone shout, but now, since the opioid drug problem has crossed the tracks into their schools and their communities, the problem is now called an epidemic, a humanitarian crisis. Before there were billions of dollars pumped into police and law enforcement to upgrade their weaponry and their tactical laws. But now billions of dollars are being spent on treatment plans for opioid addiction. Somebody ought to shout, we all got problems. Yes. Jay-Z's lyrics might have been hard to hear, but his message was clear and necessary. You already got multiple problems, young black people, but don't let anyone separate you from your freedom. The book of Romans, Paul had a similar message for the infant church in antiquity. The new believers were being tormented and oppressed by Roman citizens and the Roman government. Their immature theology was attacked and criticized by the religious establishment. In chapter eight, Paul acknowledges the problems where he wrote, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or any sword? For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep for the slaughter. Can I give you a modern day translation? Paul was saying, I got 99 problems. But when I look to the sun, I'll still have problems. But my faith and my trust in Christ won't be one of them. What am I saying to you this morning? I'm saying that we all have problems. That's life. Even the most spirit-filled, water-walking, speaking in tongues, talking people have problems. Look what Mother Teresa says. She says, I know God trusts me, and he will never leave me, nor put more on me than I can handle. I just wish he didn't trust me as much. Beloved, I implore you to consider it in all pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Your problems should lead you to praise. Your troubles should make you thankful. Your spiritual warfare should result in worship. When you have a problem, you have to verify whether it's your fault or whether it's God's favor working in your life. Remember that all your troubles are filtered through your father first. Your problems are connected to your purpose. When you have to carry something heavy, it's because it's strengthening your faith. God is realizing that you can be trusted. God is testing and growing your faith. 
That's why I find there's not one problem under God's son that he cannot solve. I know some of y'all might not believe me, but I have a message from heaven today for you. Can I give you a message, beloved? You are not the sum of what happened to you. You are not the sum of the problems that you have. You ought to thank God that your problems didn't become issues. Can I tell you about issues? Issues are problems you can't get rid of, beloved. Issues will destroy your relationship. Issues will isolate you. Issues will make you doubt that deliverance is even possible. But since Christ conquered the cross, there is no issue that cannot be healed. If you don't believe me, ask the woman with the issue of blood. Her illness called her to be rejected, but her issue didn't kill her and cause her death. I wish I had some help in this house today. Her faith turned her ailment into a miracle. You know what that means for us? That means for you and for me, I might have 99 problems, but my faith will never be one. I might have 99 problems, but the love of Christ will never be one. I might have a multitude of problems, but my praise will never be one. You better not let your problems and your struggles affect your praise. You better not let your struggles and what you're going through wear on your face. Some of y'all don't even know what you've been through this week. Some of y'all been dragged yourself in here from a long week. You was about to quit your job. Walk out on your responsibilities. Thank God I don't look like what I've been through the last seven days. I refuse to look like what I've been through. So when I get in the house of worship, I use my worship as a weapon. Because when you worship your God, it lifts your spirits and it gets the attention of God. The Bible says, for the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear and worship him. Y'all don't hear me. For in your desperation, beloved... The Lord, listen, through Christ, you are delivered, I say. You are delivered, I declare. You are delivered, I proclaim to the atmosphere. For the Bible says, many are the afflictions. Someone say many. That means 99 plus are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of all. Let me talk to two people on Facebook. Your God is faithful, beloved. He will not allow your problems to overtake you. But when your trouble becomes a little bit too much to bear, God will make a way out. He'll play a plan of escape. Even while the enemy is scheming and plotting and planning and dispersing his evil army out to go get you. Even while the demons in hell and the imps are trying to plot and scheme on you. God will make a way for you out of that. For who the son sets free. He's free indeed. You can do some stuff when you're free, beloved. That's when you're free. Your relationship with Christ becomes a problem for the enemy. Your prayer life becomes a problem for the devil. Your faith becomes a problem for all of the people who doubted you and said you weren't going to be nothing. Help me, Lord. Help me testify. With God, Christ becomes your problem solver. You don't believe me? Then let's go to his word. Therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. For those of us who are led by the Spirit of God are also his children. If God be for us, nothing. Come on, help me say it, beloved. Nothing. Come on, until it resonates in your soul. Nothing. Can stand against us. So I ask you this question, who then can condemn no one, Christ Jesus, who died, 
even more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for you. That means that you are more than a conqueror. Oh, you ought to show it to the atmosphere. I'm more. If you're like me, you know you have been predestined. You've been called. When Christ called you, he justified and affirmed your problems. And because you've been justified, you've also been glorified. You see, the world might keep record of all of your wrongdoings and failures. But the blood, oh, the blood that washed me white as snow on my best days when I feel like I'm on top of the world. Someone says it reaches. When you're feeling down and out, someone said flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength to overcome all of my problems from day to day to day he gives me new mercies thanks be to God it will never it will never lose its power I'm done I'm done, but I believe in spiritual application. I believe you got to mirror what's happening in the spiritual realm right now, in the natural realm. If you would, beloved, I need a few crazy saints to help me out who has some crazy faith. The Bible says to cast all your cares upon Christ because he cares for us. So now... When you list all of your problems, you are actually listing all of the things you've been delivered from. So what I want you to do, we're going to go through a list of problems, y'all. And I want you to cast it out of here. You've endured enough. You've struggled enough. You've suffered from pain in your body enough. It's time to cast it out. Loneliness, abandonment. Cast it out. Depression, bipolar, suicidal ideation, your broken heart, low self-esteem. Cast it out. Self-consciousness, doubt, neglect, disrespect on my job and in my family. Cast poverty and lack, self-deprivation, worrying and regret, all of my shame, feeling defeated. Cast physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, domestic violence, sexual assault, incest, molestation, divorce, unforgiveness, apathy, cast. Are we at 99 yet? Being complacent. Vindictiveness, your nightmares, generational curses, addiction, alcoholism, pornography, childhood trauma, cast. Grief, anxiety, despair, identity crisis, anger management, jealousy, envy, cast. I'll let you finish your own list. But I got one more. Though they be red as scarlet, I cast out in the name of Jesus all of my sin. Oh, y'all didn't really hear that. I said in the name, by the power of the blood that ran warm down Calvary's mouth, I cast out all the sin that's blocking my praise, blocking my relationship, stopping my purpose. I cast. Done. And I'll leave you with this. No matter what you're dealing with, 99 or 900 problems, give it all to God. For I am declaring today that all of your issues and your problems 
won't be more than an inconvenience to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and His Holy Spirit. Put holy hands together in this place. We open the doors of the church. Is there one soul? We'll wait on you, beloved. This is not a spectator sport. We'll wait on you for all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. From the pulpit to the door, the ceiling to the floor. We all need Jesus in this place. Is there one? Won't you come? Won't you come and make today the first day that you walk with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Won't you make it today? Don't wait. Today is your time. Don't wait. Right now is your time, beloved. It's your time. Come on, beloved. Come on. If the angels in heaven celebrate one. Come on, rededication. Rededication. Reconnection. Is there one? Come on, don't you go home. Don't you come home because the doors of the outer church and the doors of heaven are open right now. Come down and rededicate your life. Is there one? Is there one? If you need to be baptized into this loving family, won't you come? Won't you come? My final appeal. My final appeal. So won't you come and join what God is doing in this house of worship? Come on. You belong to us. We belong together. Come on. Come on. Indeed, come on. Celebrate with me, beloved. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your time. We thank God for your heart, for what God is ministering to your heart right now. Listen and come. For we welcome you with the open arms of Jesus Christ. Come on and give our new candidate for membership. Come on and give him a hand. Come on and celebrate with me, beloved. Come on and celebrate. Thanks be to God. Yes, this is your day, Lord. We thank you. As you all take your seats, we're going to partner you with the deacon too walk you through this process. Come on. Before we take communion, bless the offering and receive our benediction. I want to lift up every soul that is connected to this house that is away from us or apart from us physically, but never apart from our thoughts and prayers. Will you help me lift these angels of the house up? Sister Dorothy Davis, we lift you up. Sister Texana Washington, did y'all see her on the news? We lift you up. 
Sister Mary Davis, Sister Lola Booker, we lifting you up. Sister Yolinda Utley, Sister Irene Baldwin, Sister Rita Kelly, Sister Ruby Watson, Sister Deborah Wright, we lift you up. Sister Dorothy Bell, Sister Lucille Moore, Sister Janet Curtis, Sister Mary Hood Sanders, Sister Margaret McLean, we lift you up. Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Christine Stewart, Sister Mary Ann Green, Sister Retha Robinson, we lift you up. Sister Serena Harris, Sister Tracy Taylor, we lift you up. The Houston and Johnson family, we lift you up. Reverend Clara Patterson, we lift you up. Sister Jean Hedgepath, Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Thomas Spence, Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Anthony Whitaker, we lift you up. Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Steele, Deacon Jimmy Evans, we lift you up. Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, Brother William Hodge, Brother Larry Norris, Reverend John McRae, Brother Price Laster, Brother Justin Marley Hodge, Brother James Turk Sr., Brother Justin Estes and Brother Antoine Lattimore, we lift you up. And if you're sick or in need of assistance, we ask that you reach out to your deacon. For those that didn't get your name called, know that the Lord knows your situation and he knows your name and we lift you up. time to join in the Lord's Supper. Before we do so as a believing and a redeemed community, I want to bless this bread and this cup. Will you pray with me? To the God of abundance, you're more than enough. Lord, we thank you for this symbol, for this supper. We thank you, God, for your sacrifice on Calvary's Mount. But more importantly, God, we thank you that you didn't stay in the grave, God. Thank you that you rose, Lord, that you ascended, and now you're seated on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us day and night, God. Thank you for didn't, you didn't leave us alone, for you sent your Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh God. Now, God, we bless this bread and we bless this cup. And we pray, God, that we not be guilty of the blood of your sacrifice. Wash us, make us whole, that we might be worthy to participate as your beloved community. In Jesus' name. Bible records that the night that Jesus was going to be portrayed, he saw fit to have one more gathering with his friends. And at that supper, he took a piece of unleavened bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them. He said, take and eat this bread. And as often as you do it, don't you ever forget what I'm about to do for you. <laughs> Let us all eat together. And in the same manner that he took the bread, he took the chalice. And he blessed it. And before he gave it, he said, this is representative of my blood that will usher in a new covenant. As often as you sup from this cup, remember what I'm about to do for you. 
Let us drink together. And as our Gospels record, they went down from that experience singing hymns Someone say, oh, the blood that gives me strength. we take our departure from this moment of worship, we want to bless all of the gifts, offerings, and tithes that have been sown into this great ground. Pray with me. God, we thank you, for we know that all good things come of thee, O Lord. So we ask right now that you bless this offering, and that you use it to the building of your kingdom. Let your will be done, God. Bless every giver, God. Bless every household, Lord. And let them give out of their surplus and not their lack. Out of their faith and not their doubt. For this belongs to you, God. Use it as you will in Jesus' name. Receive this benediction. As we leave this place, remember this. Nothing that we encounter in this world can ever separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Not hardship or disaster, poverty or danger, neither death nor life, angels or demons, our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell itself. Nothing in all of creation can ever separate us from God's love. So go now from here with joy to love and to serve the Lord. And the people of God said amen and amen.